by special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, presents The Lone Ranger. horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail Silver. Hooray! Boxer band fights hard and fair, so in the ring, you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. The Lone Ranger, with his features carefully disguised and without his mask... Stopped his great white stallion, Silver, at a camp in a wooded grove outside San Antonio. Oh, oh, oh easy, said a big fellow. Oh, eh, Kimasabi? Aye. Now, why Marshal San Antonio wants to see you? He told me he received a call for help from the sheriff at New Braunfels, Toto. A gang of outlaws have terrorized that territory for the past month. And the sheriff and his men haven't been able to stop them. We go to New Braunfels and help, maybe? Yes, the marshal will follow us later and meet us there. I'll wear my mask over this disguise. I understand the outlaws are very clever. I want to be prepared in case of emergency. We'll start now. Well, you said to be full of Be ready. Come on, sir. Get him up. Come on. The following morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode along a trail outside of New Braunfels. We'll decide on a campsite, and we'll send word to the sheriff that we've arrived. Look, Kimasari, down the valley. Outlaws stopping a stage. Monsieur! I must come! Three of them, Tonto, use your guns. Them is coming down slow. Then turn back. Head for hills. You ride after the stage and see if anyone was hurt, Toto. I'll follow the outlaws. Uh, get him up, scout. Monsignor. Leaving Toto, the Lone Ranger headed after the retreating gunman, one of whom was riding a short distance behind the other two. In spite of the bullets fired by the outlaw, the Lone Ranger continued on without shooting his own guns. He wanted to take the man alive. 
The Lone Ranger realized the outlaw's gun was empty, so he decided to close in. Faster, Silver! Faster! The mighty stallion gradually closed the gap between the two riders. The fleeing gunman glanced back at his pursuer as if in fear. Then he did something totally unexpected. Oh, oh, oh. The Lone Ranger, with gun ready, looked puzzled as he pulled Silver to a stop. Oh, Silver! Oh! Reach and don't move! All right, all right, mister. You got the drop on me. Remove that bandana from your face. Sure, if you say so. Yeah. You're Gus Cooper, wanted in Austin for murder. I thought you might recognize me, mister. You're the leader of the gang that's operating in this territory. Yeah, and I know who you are. And I know why you came to this territory, so I decided to surprise you. I got tipped off. You and your Indian friend were riding along the trail. Then I pulled a trick that worked out just as I figured it would. What do you mean? (laughs) Mister, I have men planted among the boulders all around here. Right now, they could fill you with bullets if I gave the signal. All right, men, close in. Now, mister, drop those guns. You won't be needing them anymore. Drop them. Easy. I'll see to it they're well taken care of. Ah, I always wanted to own guns like these. (laughs) Easy, boy. All right, men, we'll take your smashed hombre to our hideout. I figure he'll be in for another surprise when he sees his Indian friend there as a prisoner, too. My friend Toto followed the stage. Yeah, but a couple of my men are on it. It belongs to me. Belongs to you? Uh Uh-huh. A friend of mine bought it at auction a few weeks ago when the Corpus Christi line went out of business. I figured I'd have use for it. Let's get going. You first, mister. Come on, Silver. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. That evening, the marshal from San Antonio arrived at the sheriff's office in New Braunfels and was surprised to learn the Lone Ranger and Tonto hadn't arrived. Meanwhile, in a cabin at the outlaw's hideout camp, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, bound hand and foot, lay on cots waiting for what might happen. The Lone Ranger still wore a disguise under his mask, which so far Gus Cooper hadn't removed. The outlaw leader stood looking down at his two prisoners gloatingly, as he spoke to one of his men. There they are, Sam. <laughs> the two hombres most outlaws are afraid of. <laughs> you sure tricked him, Gus. Oh, uh, aren't you going to take off that mask and see what he looks like? Yeah, I've been waiting to do just that. I'll take it off right now. Now we'll get a good look at your face, mister. Yeah. So that's what you look like. What did you expect, Cooper? Didn't expect to see the scarred-up-looking mug I'm seeing right now. You look better to me with a mask on. There. Now, wear it if you like. Thanks. What are you going to do with him, Gus? I have plans made. I want everybody to know Gus Cooper's plenty smart. Smarter than the Lone Ranger. Sure, You know Ace Dugan, the gambler at the cafe, is spying for us. Yeah? Well, Ace found out a big mining company payroll is leaving the bank tomorrow by buckboard. The sheriff and a deputy are going to go along as guards. Figure on lifting that payroll, huh? Yeah. But what about these two hombres? I'll tell you about that. We'll use the old stagecoach and head toward town so as to meet the buckboard with the payroll. Two of our men will be on the boot. I'll be riding in the coach with a masked man and Indian. Ace is coming out to follow the stage with a rest here. So you think you've figured out a very ingenious plan, Cooper? Sure. Like I said, I'm smart, mister. We'll get rid of the sheriff and the deputy. Then with these guns of yours, I'll plug you and the Indian. We'll load the four bodies onto the buckboard and send the driver back to town with them. (laughs) Now, just think of the excitement when people realize what happened. By Jiminy, Gus. From then on, you'll practically run things in this territory. Right. I'll make the name Gus Cooper one that even the law will be afraid of. Sam... Early in the morning, I want you to ride to the cafe and see Ace to make sure nothing's been changed. And you and him come back here to join us. Uh, All right. Oh, say, give me a gun, will you? I left mine in town to have the trigger fixed. Here. Try one of these I took from the masked man. But be sure I get it back. Sure. These two guns are going to be mine for keeps. (laughs) 
Early the following morning, the outlaw Sam, wearing one of the Lone Ranger's special guns, went to town to the cafe to see the gambler, Ace. At one of the tables, the marshal and the sheriff were eating an early breakfast. The marshal, still concerned about the masked man and Indian, finally remarked, You know, Sheriff, I still don't savvy about the Lone Ranger in Tonto. Seems to me if they couldn't get here, they would have sent word. Well, so far, we haven't found anyone who knows anything about them. Then I figure I might start back over the trail and see... See, Sheriff, who's that hombre who just came in? I don't know. Seen him around town now and then. Cowpoke from some nearby ranch, maybe. Why? That gun he's wearing. No cowpoke could own a gun like that. Mm, mighty fancy looking, but that's a very special gun, Sheriff. I'm certain there are only two like it in the West. What are you getting at? Yes, this. The two guns I mentioned are carried by the Lone Ranger. That's a mighty fine gun you're wearing this morning. You haven't worn it before, have you? Oh, just get it. One from a friend of mine. Uh, where's Ace, you know? Yeah, yeah, he's in the gaming room. Sitting at a table just inside the door waiting for early customers. Uh, thanks. I'll go talk to him. Right. Hear that, Sheriff? He just got that gun. I'm convinced he belongs to the masked man. <coughs> I'll be back in a minute. Right. Maybe I can find out what he says to the man he came to see. The marshal slowly sauntered to the doorway leading into the gaming room. He leaned against the door jam out of sight and strained to hear what was being said just beyond the doorway. The man still holds it, Ace. You ride back with me. Right. I gotta pick up my own gun at the gunsmiths, and I'll meet you at the edge of town. All right. <laughs> there sure be a lot of excitement here in town later today. <laughs> I'll see you later. Yeah, I'd better get back to the sheriff. Sheriff, something's in the wind. Get your men together quickly. Then we'll follow that hombre and his friend when they ride from town. Can't do it, Marshal. I have to ride guard with a deputy and take a payroll to the mines. Then get some men to ride with me. If something isn't done, I feel sure the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend will be done for. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She's skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O. And you'll agree. You'll like that delicious toasted oat flavor. And Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full. Add good fresh milk. Dig in and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfast every day with delicious Cheerios and milk and get that good go power. Then folks will say... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. Meantime, at the hideout cabin, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had spent an uncomfortable night under guard. Early that morning, the guard left them to get breakfast. Well, I reckon you can't pull any tricks while I go get some grub. Mm, this is not good, Kimosabe. I know. If we're going to do anything, we'll have to do it now. I've been thinking of a way. Uh, what do you think we do? The guard left a bottle on the table. I'll hop over there, turn my back, and get it. But what do you do with the bottle? If I can smash it against a stone fireplace, then perhaps I can manage to use a piece to cut the ropes that bind your wrists. It's worth a try. 
The Lone Ranger struggled to a sitting position. Then, standing, he hopped across to the table and managed to grasp the empty bottle. I have it. Now to break it. Give it. Now, Tonto, I'll try to cut your ropes. It was a tedious task, and from time to time the Indian winced slightly as the jagged edge of the broken bottle touched his wrists. But finally the rope frayed, then parted. It cut rope, keep us happy. Good. Untie my hands. Uh, 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 there. Now we untie feet. Oh, wait. I've decided on a plan. We leave the ropes on our ankles. Why we do that? We'll put the rope loosely on our wrists, then go back to our original positions on the bunks. Me not savvy. I'm hoping we can give Cooper a big surprise when the proper time comes. If we can keep them from running, we got loose. First, we'll have to throw the broken bottle and glass in the fireplace. All right, let's get busy. Uh. A short time later, Gus Cooper entered the cabin with two of his men. Sam hadn't showed me that gun he wore to town, Gus. I never would have believed you really captured these two hombres. Yeah, I hated to give that gun back to you, Gus. These are my guns from now on. That is, after I use them on the masked man and Indian. The stage is ready right now. We'll put these hombres into the coach and get going. You men follow, but stay hidden till I fire two shots. Then come riding in fast. All right. right. Let's go. Out on the trail, the marshal and the posse who had been trailing Ace and Sam from town stopped at a stream. They mean those hombres were trailing their smart. They come with their trail here, but we have to pick it up again as soon as possible. Now we'll split up right along each side of this stream and try to find out where they left it. Keep your eyes peeled. Now let's start the search. Get up there. After leaving the hideout camp, the stagecoach owned by Gus Cooper and his gang moved along back trails, then swung over to the main trail and headed back toward New Braunfels. Gus Cooper, with a smile of satisfaction, sat between the Lone Ranger and Tonto inside the coach. Believing they were still securely bound, the outlaw leader thought there was no need for precaution. The Lone Ranger and Tonto noted this. The masked man glanced occasionally at his own guns, which rested in the outlaw's holsters. They rode in silence until Gus suddenly spoke. Well, mister, <laughs> there comes a buckboard carrying that big payroll. The sheriff and his deputy won't suspect a thing until the bullets fly. Then it'll be too late. You have a lot of confidence in your plan, Cooper. Sure, why not? Nothing can go wrong now. While Gus Cooper spoke, the masked man and Indian eased their hands from the loosened ropes behind them without the gang leader suspecting. Suddenly... Now, Toto, get our guns. Hey, what? Simultaneously, the Lone Ranger and Toto grabbed the guns from Gus Cooper's holsters. He got guns. Hold on. Freeze, what freeze, Cooper. No noise or you die. You were tried. I don't say That's me. something for you to think about. When the stage meets the buckboard and stops, don't make a sound. Toto, I'll keep him covered. Untie our feet quickly. <laughs> There, you loose. Me soon get loose. Uh, there, me free. Hurry, use the rope to tie Cooper. Uh, you won't that. get away with this. Maybe not. This worth a try. Use his bandana to gag him, Tom. Uh, me do that. Within a moment, Gus was tied and gagged. Then, as the stage approached the oncoming buckboard, the Lone Ranger gave additional directions. I thought I would stop. Get out on the off side of the coach and cover the two men on the seat. I'll get out on the other side near the buckboard. Uh. <laughs> Hey, Sheriff. Oh, oh, there. Oh, yeah, what you hail us for, driver? Let's go, Toto. Don't move. You're covered. Hey, something's gone wrong. The engine's got us covered. Sheriff, look, a masked man. Wait, hold your fire. That must be the hombre the marshal told me about. An Indian's with him. <coughs> Mister, the marshal is plumb worried about you. How on earth did you get to be in that stagecoach? No time for explanations now, Sheriff. I suggest you and the deputy put the payroll into the stagecoach and get inside yourselves. We'll tie and gag the two outlaws who are riding the seat of the stage and load them and Cooper onto the buckboard. I don't savvy. 
Quickly and briefly, the Lone Ranger told of Gus Cooper's plan. Then, after firing into the air for the benefit of the outlaws who had followed and must be waiting and hiding nearby, the Lone Ranger and the others quickly loaded Gus Cooper and the two gunmen, all tied and gagged, onto the buckboard and gave orders to the driver to deliver them to the turnkey at the jail. All right, driver. Turn around and head for town fast. Sure. Get up there. Come on. Get into the coach, Sheriff. All right. We'll be protected in here. The outlaw gang should soon come riding this way, thinking the holdup was successful. Look, Kimosabe. Yes? Me see riders coming over rise yonder. By Jiminy, here they come. And more than we bargained for, too. We'll keep out of sight until they get within close range. Hey, Gus. He's on the buckboard heading back to town with the bodies, and it. Hey, Gus, where are you? What is hey, you why aren't the men on the seat of the stage? Sam, I'm beginning to think there's... Don't move any of you. Hey, look, the man's the engine. You reach quick. Yeah, we got you covered. Hey, something has happened. Gus isn't here. Well, there are four of them to aid us. Why do we... We can handle you. Use your guns. Don't let them get away with it. Hold it. No! Oh. Come on. Sheriff, look. Here comes the marshal and the posse. Hey, there's a posse coming. We got to fight our way out of these... Oh. The outlaws, determined not to be taken, tried to fight their way out of the trap. But they soon became panic-stricken as bullets flew thick and fast. Several of them were wounded, and with the Lone Ranger and Tonto with the two lawmen before them, and the marshal and posse closing in behind them, they were hopelessly beaten, and one after the other, they threw down their guns. Well, we get them all. I ain't giving you a ton of receipt, Mr. But what happened? Once more, the Lone Ranger related what had happened. Then he asked, Marshal, what brought you and the posse? You reached us just at the right time. Hey, saw an hombre in the cafe wearing one of your guns. I got suspicious and trailed him and another hombre to the hideout. The stage had already left and so had the gang. But they left Silver and Scout in a clear trail from there, so we came along, brought your horses, and heard the shooting. I'm glad we got here in time. Seems so you thought your own way out of this deal. You and Tonto were slated for death, but you came out of it with flying colors. But Gus Cooper was clever enough in the beginning to lead us into a trap. Well, now that things are under control, Tonto and I will go back to San Antonio. I'm glad everything turned out as it did. Well, I'll ride with you, mister. I reckon the sheriff and his men can handle things from here on. Glad to have your company, Marshal. Easy, said big fellow. Steady. Adios, Sheriff. We'll see you again. Adios, everybody. Say, Sheriff, that hombre sure is a real man of action. We would have lost that payroll if it hadn't been for him, and we caught the outlaw gang to boot. Who is he? He's an hombre the marshal sent over from San Antonio to help round up those outlaws. You can plainly see he and that Indian sure did their part. <laughs> you know, he's the only masked man I ever heard of being on the side of the law. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It's inspiring to know champions are made, not born. Just aim for the top like Bob Davies did in basketball. He's the great set shot artist for the Rochester Royals. Small Bob worked hard at basketball, determined he would top them all. He learned to make that fast break play. And here's what helped Bob on his way. Wheaties for breakfast most every day. Today Bob sinks that payoff shot and Wheaties still help him a lot. A Wheaties kid, a Wheaties man. That's Bob Davies. Wheaties eater, 22 years. Real man food Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Bob, lay it in there. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. 
Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.